<laughs> oh, jeez! Guys, seriously! I'm in the shower over here, okay? Hey, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Yes, I wear my suit in the shower, but that's why I have a suit where I can take out the Gore-Tex. I don't know if you know this, but if you take harsh soaps and you wash the suit with it, it'll ruin the Gore-Tex. This means I can have a nice clean suit, I can dry it out, and I look, I don't look like a vagabond. I look nice and clean, I look acceptable, and, and I don't smell so bad either. Uh, that's a really important thing to consider when you buy a suit. So, when you go buy your suit, just keep that in mind. Now, get out of here. I'm kind of private in here. Go, 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 go. Shoo, 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 shoo. Come on, guys, seriously. All right, it's hot. So right now, let's see, it is 114 degrees. I don't know what that is in Celsius, but I know it's on the high side of the 40 mark. And it's hot by any standards. Although this may not be the hottest weather I've ever ridden in, it's definitely hot. And this is a perfect example why I'm not a big fan of Gore-Tex laminated adventure riding suits if you're going to use it for four season or for traveling conditions where you're going to be traveling through cold weather, wet weather, and really hot extreme weather. Obviously ventilation is one of the big things I'm looking for, but no matter how much ventilation I jack into this jacket, and of course I always make sure there's an exit port so the wind can blow through, if I'm wrapped up in Gore-Tex, it's still a waterproof liner. In fact, one of the things I like about this suit, I'll show you, out of one of my other pairs of pants, if you look at this armor, you can see right through it. It's set up so that the airflow that blows through the knees, because it's not blocked by, or blocked by Gore-Tex, means that that wind blows across my legs. And as long as I have sweat or moisture there, I can continue to cool. And that's one of the things that I'm looking for along with the fact that it's not a laminated Gore-Tex liner that I can pull that Gore-Tex liner out. The other side of this is to go, well, gee, Brett, what about a fully mesh suit? And I have one of the really nice, in fact, I have a really nice Cayenne Pro. But the problem is, is much like the laminated suits, they have a window of ideal operating temperatures and once you get up over 100 degrees what happens is is i start closing vents up because i'm insulating myself from the heat unless i can pour some water into the jacket to put moisture in there to to allow myself to cool then what i need to do is actually insulate myself there you go non-laminated suits are best for hot weather and definitely make sure you get armor that also breathes Hey, up here! I'm up here! Oh. Hey! Let me tell you about the importance of having a suit that's easy to move in. My adventure suits are my clothes. I don't wear overpants. And the reason is I can move around on the motorcycle a lot more. But not only is it important to be able to move on the motorcycle, but sometimes you just might need it for survival. If there's a wild alligator or a hippo or a rabid guinea pig, you might just have to climb to safety. It's not the suit, it's the features in the suit that, are, that I'm really interested in. You don't think about what this rock would feel like rubbing up your back until you fall off your bike. It's critical that you have a zipper that your jacket and pants match and zip together and that you use the zipper. Because this rubbing up your back would not feel good. Also, hip armor and pants, a lot of people don't think about it till you fall down. On the suit, protection is one of those key elements we buy them for. 
And because I recommend buying a suit that's on the loose side rather than on the form fitted side, because when it's too tight, it doesn't flow air and you can't get insulation underneath. You, if you want to stay cool, the air has to have some way to blow through the suit. And obviously if it's winter time, you need to put layers underneath. Because of that, you need adjustments on the arms that allow you to tighten everything up so that the armor stays in place. And the same thing down, if you come over here, on the pant legs, you'll see there's adjustments here to tighten up around the knee armor, and then also there's adjustments so you can tighten the pants up around the, or the pants around the boots. So if you have a bulky pair of boots, make sure that they fit underneath. That also allows it to keep that armor in place. And I'm looking for armor for protection. I want armor that's gonna have significant coverage, not just a very small on the knee pad. This is a double A rated suit. What that means is when they rate the suits in Europe, the CE ratings, they have a B and C, one is armor and one is slide protection. Those you're not interested in. Then they have an A, a double A and a triple A. The triple A is gonna be your competitive suits on the racetrack. Your single A are really your around town commuter suits that you really don't want to fall down in. So a double A rated suit is what you're looking for and that's what this one is. So the same is true with the jacket. It's got to have the elbow armor. It needs to be full length or as long as you can get it. This goes almost all the way out to the cuff. The shoulders on this one are left and right. That means they curve around the, the shoulders in the direction of rotation. It makes it more comfortable and a back protector. Those are the minimums. This one has a bonus. It's another reason why I wear the Revit suits. They're set up so that you have straps and you can have a collar. Unfortunately, this collar is no longer produced, but they do have a new one that's supposed to be coming out. And although it's not necessarily what I would consider the most protective collar, it is absolutely the most convenient. And if I'm not going to wear it, it doesn't do me any good. And that's why I chose this particular collar and why I have a jacket that's made to go with that. Color is another significant consideration when I pick up a suit. I'm going to pick a color for two reasons. One is to hide filth. The other one is to control temperature. Most of the time I go for temperature, which is why you see that I wear white or light gray suits. The pants I'm wearing today are solid black, not my favorite color, but the black helps hide the dirt because unfortunately Revit decided that a white suit should also have a white butt, which means when I go through puddles, it looks like I got really scared and made a mess out of my pants. So I've been switching over to the black pants just to hide the filth and the goo. It really does make a difference though. And if you're in Fahrenheit, we're talking almost 20 degrees difference inside the suit for a white suit versus a black suit. And that's in 80 degree weather. That's a big deal. While I'm down here, the other feature that's very important to me is having leather on the inside of the riding pants. This leather allows me to index on the bike and also it doesn't wear through as fast when I'm getting all the dust and everything rubs up against it. So that's kind of a, 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 a big deal to me for sure. And that's, uh, those are the major features I'm looking for in a riding suit. It doesn't matter how much you pay for a suit. You can spend a lot or you can spend a little. It matters whether the suit fits you, whether it fits your budget. And of course, if you have nothing, that doesn't do any good whatsoever. So make sure you have a good suit. Let me tell you what I don't like about this suit and what I would like to see them improve on. My biggest complaint is right here. I've had more than one button fail right after I, I received the suit and it was brand new. Come on guys, this is a premium suit, a button, that's the issue. It's a cheap and easy fix, but I shouldn't have to do that. Also, the Velcro on the inside, I've had failures where the Velcro was stitched so close to the edge that even on one occasion, the first time I opened it up, the Velcro tore off. With a suit that's this high, uh, this high and this premium in cost and construction, that's just really silly. The good news is, Revit has replaced this Velcro here, and on the new suit, it'll have a zipper that goes across both edges, which was one of my wish list items. Here is my other complaint. The zipper is on this lower edge of the pant leg. This is where the Gore-Tex liner zips in, but because I anchor into the bike at the ankle, this zipper is always damaged. 
and they should be able to take this zipper, put it higher up the leg, and then have just a snap and loop enclosure at the bottom that would protect that so we wouldn't damage it as adventure riders. Also, Velcro on the sleeves. I don't like anybody that uses Velcro on the sleeves. Eventually, this is all going to wear out. It's going to get filthy, dirty, grass, and then trying to keep that stuck to the jacket, it just flaps around. I'd much rather see snaps or some kind of other closure that isn't so... I mean, come on, we're adventure riders. These things are going to get really packed full of stuff and messes. The, I, I did mention that the, the body is made out of 750 denier, which is very good for a modern suit, and 1,000 denier on all of the impact armor points. And that's a big deal because that denier count is what allows you to slide along the pavement without grinding through. A minimum for me is around 500 to 600, and that's what you're going to find in most premium suits. Your inexpensive entry-level suits may be even less than that, all the way down to 150. It's very, very lightweight, and you can't always tell by just feeling the material. What I would like to see is leather on those impact points. It just takes it up one step higher than where we're already at, and that's supposed to be coming out on the new suit as well. The last thing that I really would like to see in that next suit, and it sounds like it's going to be in that Defender 3, is to have a ventilation zipper on the very front of the jacket. Generally speaking, as well as the chest ventilation works, a chest zipper always seems to work the best. And Revit uses it on some of their other suits, and other manufacturers have different variations as well. So having that zipper where it opens up and you had a second zipper with a, a vent in it, that would be uh, absolutely ideal. And, and again, rumor has it, it's coming out on the Defender 3. So I'm pretty stoked about what's coming out. Hopefully this will help you select a suit that works for you. Please don't think that you have to go out and spend thousands and thousands of dollars to get a good suit. Find something that works for you. Find ways to upgrade it if you need to. It doesn't matter. You just need to have good protection. A big call out, a big thank you for all my Patreon supporters for making this video possible and for supporting me for the next generation of videos as well. If you're not already a Patreon supporter, please consider jumping on and just passing on a few dollars so I, we can keep making these and, uh, and give you some, some good content here. Uh, also, one other special call out to all of my former students who train with me in the United States and around the world. I think I've swallowed a fly. <laughs> Maybe it was a mosquito. Okay, but thanks for all those that trained with me and for all of those that are planning to travel through Nepal and Africa with me this next year. I'm really excited about those trips. If you're interested in that and you don't know about those, jump onto my website at brettax.com. Until then, remember, <laughs> don't swallow flies and mosquitoes. Smile while you ride because attitude matters.